the Engadget stage is live again, and uh, we're going to talk about VR a little bit more today because it's such a cool new experience, it's such a cool new platform, uh, and there's finally some really good content coming out. So uh, I'm Jessica Condit, senior reporter for Engadget.com, and uh, let's introduce ourselves down the line. Who do we have? Sure. Hi, I'm Molly Swenson. I'm the co-founder of Riot. Uh, we are an immersive media company based in Los Angeles, and we were the first virtual reality content company exit ever. About a year ago, we sold to the Huffington Post AOL. We specialize in virtual reality content, both narrative, sort of episodic filmmaking, as well as news and documentary style film. Awesome. Uh, I'm Nora Kirkpatrick. I'm a VR filmmaker and writer and director, and I've done, uh, now I'm on my second show with both Riot and Hulu and VR. And hi, I'm Noah Heller, and I'm VP of Partnerships at Hulu. And um, one of the focuses at Hulu is VR. Um, we've had a chance to, to make a really cool VR app and have a lot of interesting VR experiences. And we've made a couple shows already um, with the Riot crew and with Nora. And we're here to talk today about one we're really excited about. Yeah, so there's a lot of exciting stuff happening. I mean, just with Hulu, with Riot, all these things. So let's start with just some basic questions about VR kind of filmmaking and what that means and how it relates to video games. So my main question is when the audience controls the camera and controls a part of the actual film, how does your development process have to change? Yeah, yeah well, so on this latest one we're doing door number one, which is a choose your own adventure right. interactive comedy. Uh, announced I, yesterday. Announced yesterday. Yeah. Um, this one we're really excited about. It's a bigger scale, um, we call it episode one, but we're shooting about 55 minutes of footage for a 15 to 20 minute user experience. So the way I wrote this is in like a decision tree. So everyone starts at the top of act one and then you split in decisions and those split and they come back at the top of act two and top of act three. Because if you went forever, it would just be exponential. Um, but the decisions based on the viewers, we tried to make both decisions feel really weighty and both feel really necessary to the plot. So you really are torn and have to make a quick gut decision. Well, this is really going to pay off in this way, but this might be more exciting here, so you really don't know. And that'll help you want to go back and watch again to go a different direction. So to me, that sounds like a video game, right? Like, yeah, did you I mean, take inspiration or look I at that? I say it's yeah. video game technology with like the emotionality and plot themes of film. Gotcha. Because I, you don't win or lose these. It's really about what you're more interested in and what emotional state you want to be in. Because you have a lot of choices in this. You're going to a 10 year reunion, you can make out with this girl, you can get high with the janitor, like you can really go on a journey. So it's not about winning or losing, but rather like what story do you want to live? Okay. Do you go for the girl, do you go for the weed? It's yeah. like the ultimate what question always in life. Yeah. You know, uh, and I would add on to it, you know, video games forever have had to deal with like the user and the viewer having agency, right? Um, if you're a filmmaker, you can, you can frame something and know that it happens that way every time. As we enter the VR world, we say, what happens when the viewer is part of the scene? And what if they want to be looking that way? And these are problems the video game industry has wrestled with for years. And, and so now we're able to take them and, and try and make really compelling you know, film content with them in VR. Yeah, and I like to compare it to when I was little, I used to play Diablo all the time exactly. until it got advanced enough that it was just too scary. I couldn't actually handle it. But I remember the anxiety that I felt and the uncomfortability I felt that my yeah. actions were going to end the life of my character or just terrify me in some way. Right. And I used to try and get that sort of experience watching scary movies, mm -hmm. but it was never the same because you had no impact on how the film ended up. Yeah. This, I think, in the comedy sphere becomes really interesting because, you know, again, instead of it just being going for scares and going for sort of this gut jump reaction, you're going for humor. And it's a, media, it's a, it's a theme that lends itself really well to this, I think. And, and um, this idea of spatial uncomfortability that Nora talks about a lot is something that you can play around with in virtual reality that you couldn't uh, previously in video games, really, or in film itself. That's interesting. I mean, OK, so this idea that the, the player is still controlling the action that feels like a video game. So is that win or lose state? Is that what makes it a video game? So like not having that, does that make it a film? Or are there no rules here? Are we just creating experiences? Do we not need to define anything? What do you, what yeah, do you I mean, I guess to me, this doesn't feel like when you're watching it, it's going to feel like a game. I right. want it to feel like your life. Sure. So I want these decisions to feel really inherent. Yeah. And I feel like 
that's different from a game where you're really being challenged every second to just win or you die. I think this is like, I'm gonna live this story for 20 minutes and I'm gonna be invested in what happens. I mean, I don't, I don't, maybe that's similar to games, but for me, this feels like a film. If I mean, you could be in your favorite movie, you know. The games fulfill a lot of different needs, right? Sure. And, and this is an experience where you iterate and grow and you see that accomplishment, um, but this is an experience where you explore. And, and maybe if one of the things that you know puts something in the game realm is that you really want to repeat it and you really want to experience it, um, how's that any different from any other medium you really get into? Right. Um, the thing that VR does that very much relates to games is immersion. Mm -hmm. Right. You're you're in that world, yeah. and just like a great novel or a great movie can also immerse you in that world, VR gets you there really quickly. So in in this show, in in door number one, you're at your high school reunion, and that that is your best buddy. And, and the janitor does have great weed. Um, these are all like important like notes um, that get hit, and if we do our job right, um, it immerses you in the best way. As we're, as we're closing out here, let's think about the future. Um, where do you think VR is going to take us? Like, what's, what's next? I know we're still starting VR. I know it's still early days, but, but what do you see on the horizon? Yeah. Well, I'm going to try to resist just jumping into the like Ready Player One narrative exactly, of the haptic right. body suits and right. like entire universes and school systems and travel systems that exist in, yeah. in an oasis type world. But I do think that, you know, where it becomes even more immersive just to continue that conversation is with with additional haptic additions, right? So the idea that you could be wearing a bodysuit that shakes when something happens, yeah, or awesome. you can be wearing a bodysuit that vibrates along with any music, like mm -hmm. this audio immersion, I think. Yeah. Having that be not just audi audible, but also feelable on your body, just sort of extending yeah. it from your senses of sight, sound, uh, into touch, I think is probably where we're heading, I hope. Awesome, yeah, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, just in terms of like vocal narratives and the social aspect, 99% of people who watch Virtually Mike and Nora talk back to it, try to have dialogue and interact. That's funny. Even, Even if they know. A 360 video, it's yeah. not interactive. <laughs> yeah, you can't so do it. That's, yeah. that's what made me want to do uh, door number one, so you can have more control in the narrative. But I think farther than that, we'll go into a place where you can speak and it'll register and you can have a dialogue with an avatar, with another person who's mm -hmm. playing on another. I think it'll get even more to that point. Um, so you can really have a conversation in the narrative. Very much, yeah. I think uh, I'd love to go all sci-fi and talk about mm -hmm. you know, brain implants and what have you. Yeah. But, but you know, to, to put it really in the domain of the real, um, this, this immersion's a spectrum. Right, and I think what we're going to actually see, which is really interesting, is people like choosing to travel along that spectrum based on how they want to interact with the medium. So, all of a sudden, one day you're watching a movie, and now you've got your phone in your hand, and you're looking around in the scene of the movie, and now it's on your head, and you're in the scene of the movie. Right. And that travel of, am I here to be passive, or am I here to be in the world? All, it, it, all happening in the same world, in the same medium, I think is going to be the part that's a little remarkable to us because I think it's going to happen very subtly that one day it'll be very easy to say, I watched that on my couch last night. Oh cool, I was walking around in the world. And you both had an experience with the same kind of media.